Welcome back to Mental Math. Today, we're looking at a system that might seem straightforward at first. x plus y equals 6, and x times y equals 36. But here's the thing. This problem has a twist that takes us into some pretty interesting mathematical territory. Let's start by combining these equations using substitution. The goal here is to express everything in terms of a single variable. We'll begin with the first equation, x plus y equals 6. Now, to isolate y, we just need to rearrange this slightly. Moving x to the other side gives us y equals 6 minus x. This is our expression for y. Now let's bring in the second equation, x times y equals 36. Here's where substitution comes in. We'll replace y with our expression from before. And just like that, we've eliminated y, leaving us with an equation that only involves x. Next, we'll expand this and rearrange it into standard quadratic form to see what we're really dealing with. Starting from x times the quantity, 6 minus x equals 36. We'll distribute the x across the parentheses. That gives us 6x minus x squared equals 36. To get this into standard form, we need everything on one side. Let's move the 36 over. Subtracting 36 from both sides puts the equation equal to 0. Now, it's conventional to have the x squared term be positive. So let's multiply everything by negative 1. And there we have it, our quadratic equation in standard form. Before solving, Let's use the discriminant to see what kind of solutions we're going to get. The discriminant is this expression b squared minus 4ac. It tells us whether we have real or complex solutions. Positive means two real solutions, zero means one, and negative means complex solutions. For our equation, a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is 36. Plugging these into the discriminant formula, let's evaluate negative 6 squared. That's 36. Now the product 4 times 1 times 36. That's 144. Now we subtract. We get negative 108. A negative discriminant means we're entering the complex number realm. No real solutions here. To solve this, we'll need to venture into the world of complex numbers. Complex numbers are built on this idea of i, the imaginary unit defined as the square root of negative 1. It's what lets us work with square roots of negative numbers. Let's use the quadratic formula with our coefficients. The key is simplifying the square root of negative 108. We can split this as the square root of 108 times the square root of negative 1. Now, to simplify the square root of 108, we look for perfect square factors. 36 is 1. Writing 108 as 36 times 3. We can pull out the square root of 36 and write the square root of negative 1 as i. The square root of 36 is 6, so we have 6 times the square root of 3 times i. Now we divide everything by 2, splitting into separate fractions which simplifies to 3 plus or minus 3 i root 3. These are our two complex solutions for x. Now we need to find the corresponding y values for each x solution. Remember, y equals 6 minus x from our original substitution. Let's start with the first case where x is 3 plus 3 i root 3. Substituting this into our equation for y, distributing the negative sign, and combining like terms gives us 3 minus 3i root 3. For the second case, where x is 3 minus 3i root 3, substituting into the equation for y, distributing the negative, which gives us 3 plus 3i root 3. Interesting. Notice how the x and y values swap their imaginary parts. Let's bring it all together. Here are our two solution pairs. These are our two solution pairs. 
Notice the beautiful symmetry. When x is one value, y is the other. Now let's verify these actually work in our original equations. First, checking that x plus y equals 6. Grouping the real and imaginary parts separately. The imaginary parts cancel perfectly, leaving just 6. Check! The sum works. Now the product. Does x times y equal 36? There's a nice shortcut for multiplying complex conjugates. a plus bi times a minus bi just equals a squared plus b squared. Here a is 3 and b is 3 root 3, so we get 3 squared plus 3 root 3 squared. Let's work out this squared term. That's 9 plus 9 times 3. 3 squared is 9. Root 3 squared is 3. 9 times 3 is 27. And 9 plus 27 gives us exactly 36. Perfect. Our solutions check out. Let's visualize why there are no real solutions. A graph makes this beautifully clear. Let's plot both equations on the coordinate plane. Any solutions would be where the graphs intersect. The equation x plus y equals 6 is this straight line, and x times y equals 36 gives us this hyperbola. Look at that! The line and hyperbola never meet. No intersection means no real solutions. This is why we had to venture into complex numbers to solve this system. Thanks for watching Mental Math! If you enjoyed exploring this complex number adventure, Give this video a like and subscribe for more mental math challenges.